Hey, it's Hima Reddy here. I use price, time, and momentum to boost my trading and that of my tribes. And sometimes my analysis is not exactly on the mark. This is why I always tell you guys that I don't have a crystal ball, so don't follow me blindly. And there's an example of that here. So I'm going to put on a brave face and turn it into a lesson for all of you, all right? So let's start with the E-mini S&P 500 futures. So that's the September 2023 contract chart. And last week and weeks prior, we had all these big red candles, right? So I came into the week with an expectation that we might continue lower and I had some downside targets. The thing is that when I opened up the chart, so I'm just gonna stay on this daily uh, or clean chart to keep it simple. When I opened up the charts on Sunday, okay, so after this Friday close, and I saw this candle, so not the green one after, but I just saw this guy right here, okay? I was like, hey, that is a indication of some uh, market slowdown, right? We're not falling, falling, falling with these big red bars. And so uh, maybe I need more time to determine what the direction would be, but you know, I have a bit of a schedule. I do certain things on Sundays. And so I rolled with it. Now I had expectation for futures to trade, not a whole lot lower, but into this June 8th range. And I was kind of stuck on that. The middle of that's about 4325. So getting stuck on a level, guys, like an expectation that the market's gonna trade down to a level or trade up to a level, if you notice that in yourself, that can be the first sign that you might be experiencing basically a confirmation bias, that you have an idea of what you think the market's gonna do and you're only collecting evidence that supports that, okay? So I had that confirmation bias for 4325 and so I was bearish. Now, let's take this down to the 60 minute time frame because clearly you can see that on the chart we have been up since we had a little bit of weakness yesterday but i was pretty convinced that we would start rolling over before getting to the levels we did today again because of the pull or so i thought of 4325 support down here now if we again look at this on a 60 minute chart and i'm purposely using just clean charts to make it real simple okay my detailed charts are in my skinning the markets analysis and looking at this 60 minute chart, if I look back at what was going on last Friday, so that was the low of Friday. Uh, let's see, the market close was here, okay? So that was the 4 p.m. Eastern close on Friday. Well, yeah, sure, there's red zone domination, a concept from um, my four zones education. Sure, we're still within the context of a bigger picture downtrend, but we had broken above a recent significant price high. So that was something. Again, I didn't, didn't give it too much weight. We started going sideways and then rose. And here, and this ended up being useful for a short-term down move. Here, I got very sort of caught up on being at a certain resistance level. So I use GAN 8 levels to calculate uh, resistance, not Fibonacci. And I'm just going to kind of hone in on a couple of key ones. So... I saw that we were hovering beneath this 37.5 and this old bottom. We were back in the bear resistance zone, so expect, expecting a downward move. That did come into play, but it was limited. So number two point here, guys, if you um, get, you know, kind of like past door number one, where you didn't catch that you were having a confirmation bias and that you weren't looking at all the evidence, the next red flag that might stop you is if you're expecting the market to fall, like I did here, and it doesn't fall as far as you thought it would, that is a sign that perhaps direction is changing. Same goes for the upside. Let's say you were back here and you had a bullish stance. If the market was rallying but not going as high as you were expecting it to, that would be a clue that perhaps you are, you know, kind of not seeing everything, all right? All right, so from here, we traded higher, we hit that 37.5%, traded higher, hit 50%. So this is where we were as of yesterday's close on Tuesday. So by the time I came and saw all this, first thing in the morning, so exactly here, okay? So I'm gonna take off this 37.5. I'm kind of only revealing it to you as it would look at the time I did the analysis. Here's the third issue I found, okay? Here I came in and I saw forecasts. If you lose, use loss forecasting, my system, it's probably easy for you to see the forecast that would have had an expectation to trade down to about 43.80. And it wouldn't have been crazy based on what you can draw in the forecast and having been at a 50% retracement of a previous move, right? 
Here's the thing. When I paired that forecasting with the RSI power zones, when I looked at this in the morning, I was very hung up on this peak in the bear resistance power zone. But I did not realize, and I didn't like capture, that there was this move forming a trough potentially at what's called a historical hold or relative zone. That's an advanced RSI power zones concept, but clearly it's not advanced for me, right? I taught it. I just failed to capture that. So that's tip number three, guys. If you're using RSI power zones, always double check yourself. Okay, if I am really kind of hung up, right, on a peak forming in bear resistance, is there any bullish evidence countering my peak? Same thing if you were bullish, okay? Let's say back here, if you were uh, bullish for the market to continue higher here, and you were really excited about these troughs, you have to acknowledge the peaks that are forming along the way that were capped in bear resistance. So those are going to be my three takeaways. All right. So this is a very different kind of video for me. I mean, look at what unfolded, right? Boom, just completely went the other direction. Bulls took off. And um, now that I recognize these three factors as specifically not having me with the full flow of the trend this week, don't get me wrong. You could still make winning trades using my report analysis because I give support and resistance levels and I give other data. But if you're looking at what direction I was expecting things to unfold, I was off here and that does happen. I am not perfect at analysis and nobody out there is. So I thought I'd turn this into a lesson for a couple of things that I pulled away so that I watch myself and don't let those things creep up again. And in the end, guys, it doesn't matter what analysis you do, as long as you act based on the truth and the fact of the price action and the momentum and the timing, you can still win on the trade, even if your initial analysis was not on the spot. Okay. So hope that helps you and I'll catch you next time.